everyone, Jenny with On Fire Fit, and welcome to another episode of High Heel Hallelujah. Today I'm talking about when things don't look good, and it's going to be very similar and tied in to last week's video. Sometimes things look bad, but I would like us to be a little challenged to consider that they may be good in disguise. But first, let's look at the shoes. This pair of shoes is kind of a sling back and they obviously are always liking to fall off of my heel. Maybe I need to tighten up that little buckle there. But this pair of shoes is again, black and white because there's tiny little stitching there. But, and last week's video, of course, was on black and white and when things are gray. And this video is a tie-in with a little different twist, but also looking at how God weaves things together. And this shoe kind of reminded me of weaving. And so we are going to talk about how sometimes when things look bad, they actually might be good. Sometimes in life, we are in some kind of bad situation or maybe there's bad things happening and we can really be challenged to think how in the world could this be good? Now, I'd like to start off with the caveat that there are certain things that people go through. I'm going to just go as far as to say like if you lost your child or something like that, I cannot imagine how difficult it would be to take a horrible situation like that and see anything good about it. And I am not trying to make this sound like a Pollyanna, everything can be fine and dandy. There's a lot in this world that is not fine and dandy and there's a lot that we won't get to see corrected until we get to heaven. So I don't want to make it sound like I am negating anybody's feelings or some of the traumas or difficulties they've been through. But I do think that in a lot of situations, we have a choice and we can choose God's way and rely on him to turn good from bad situations. As an example, the host of America's Most Wanted, John Walsh, he lost his child and that tragedy is not good. There's nothing good about that. However, rather than just remain in a bitterness mode about what happened with his child, he chose to put a spin on it that has caused many children to be saved. And so through that one very difficult, bad situation, a lot of good has come. So again, I don't negate what he went through. I'm sure if he could trade everything in, in his life that has turned into good and reverse it and get his son back or child, I forget if it's a, a girl or a boy, but if he could, I'm sure he would do that. But what he has chosen to do is make good out of bad. And I think that that's one very extreme way of looking at it, but we can look at so many things in life in this same way. And I'm going to read a little story. I think they consider it like a fable, but I do think that it kind of makes the point. One day there was a man and his horse ran away and his neighbor comes over and says to commiserate, I'm so sorry about your horse. And the farmer says, who knows what's good or bad? The neighbor is confused because this is clearly terrible. The horse is the most valuable thing he owns. But the horse comes back the next day and he brings with him 12 other horses. The neighbor comes back over to celebrate and says, congratulations on your great fortune. And the farmer replies again, who knows what's good or bad. And the next day, the farmer's son is taming one of the wild horses and he's thrown and breaks his leg. The neighbor comes back over and says, I'm so sorry about your son. The farmer repeats, who knows what's good or bad. 
Sure enough, the next day the army comes through their village and is conscripting able-bodied young men to go and fight in war, but the son is spared because of his broken leg. And on the story goes, good or bad, who knows? And the point that I think, even though this is not a story about Christianity or following Jesus or something like that, it does kind of put an interesting twist or spin on the things that are difficult or bad in our lives. I believe with all of my heart, the verses in the Bible from Romans 8, 28, that God will work good from bad situations for those who love him. I love the passion translation of that verse. I'm going to read that to you now. So we are convinced that every detail of our lives is continually woven together to fit into God's perfect plan of bringing good into our lives. For we are his lovers who have been called to fulfill his designed purpose. For he knew all about us before we were born, and he destined us from the beginning to share the likeness of his son. And the weaving, we are woven together to fit into God's plan. I think that it is amazing when you can look at situations that are bad or don't seem right, and you can see how it could be good. I'm going to use an example from my life, which is happening right now, and actually a story that applies to today for me, really. I have a daughter who is going to be going to college. She is doing extremely well in high school, which sets her up for potential scholarships. And she's it, taking a class where she's been having some challenges, and those challenges are perhaps setting her up to have a lower GPA than what those scholarships would give her. So my thinking in this, and this is the way that as an adult and with wisdom, maybe these things make more sense. And also it's easier when you're not the one going through the situation to see this. But I, I think, you know, she's still in the process of trying to decide what school to go to. And I'm sure the scholarships that she might get would help direct her or not to a school. And so in this situation where she doesn't know the outcome, I told her, I know that this is difficult. I know that this is something that feels bad. Like you don't want to be in a position where you might not get a scholarship for a school that you want to go to. But what if God has an idea that you need to go to this other school and if you didn't get that scholarship that sent you there, it would push you this direction and maybe that's the perfect school for you. I had similar situations going through my life that I can look back on and reflect on. One being that I always wanted to be a mom. I always wanted to find the right one to marry and to have kids and everything. And I went through a lot of years of being single, dating. I got my career and everything fine with that. But as I was going along, it didn't feel right because I'm thinking all my friends are getting married. I should be getting married and having kids. and. I kept thinking, this isn't a good situation. What happens if I never find the one? Or what if I don't get to fulfill those dreams or whatever? And yet in the process, God had this beautiful plan and really navigated all the doors that needed to be opened and closed so that I ended up with a wonderful career. I was able to pay off my loans and things in order to get that degree. I met my husband right at the point when I was launching out into my career and the timing was perfect. Now, had I been the one to try to navigate that, I probably would have really royally screwed it up. So thankfully, God knows how to navigate those things. He can turn good from things that kind of on the surface appear bad. I think the challenge for us though is to be very careful that we don't get into a victim mode and start thinking that 
all these bad things happen to me and so I just can't get ahead in life. That is a kind of a maybe a subtle thing that sometimes people don't recognize that they're doing. But when you are in that kind of a mode, you are not able to see clearly how God is working through that situation. There's a lot of little things along the way where things that could appear to be bad might be perfect. Like as an example, I have a lot of patients that I care for with diabetes. And when they first get diagnosed with prediabetes, they're thinking this is really bad and I'm thinking this could be really good because it's a wake-up call. Obviously what you're doing hasn't been working. What you're doing with your body is sort of destroying it and you're getting a warning sign. So can you choose to see this as a wonderful thing that you have the opportunity to wake up and say, wait, I'm not going to go in this direction anymore. And then therefore you're saving yourself from long-term damage, dialysis, losing your eyesight, losing a foot, whatever. So I think we have to be very careful to look at things that come at us that we might think look bad and see how God might be using it for a good purpose. And then we can submit to his purpose and say, okay, Lord, what do you want me to learn from this? And how can I move forward in a healthy direction? And that's what we'll be doing in this next new year as I talk a lot more about that kind of stuff. But I hope that for you, you really consider this because God is weaving these things together for our good. And if you love him, that's the promise that you have is that he will continue to weave things together for your good. Um, if you choose to ignore him and don't want to do his way, then he gives you that option. He gives you that choice. But then don't be mad if you're not getting what you want or you are not feeling peace or joy. A lot of times I don't get what I want, but it turns out to be better for me because I didn't realize that what I wanted was really not in my best interest. So I think it's we have to be careful not to say, I'm going to push God out and then be mad at him when he doesn't rescue me. I think we need to be willing to open our hearts, our minds, our spirits and say, yep, I want to go your way and then let him lead us. So let us end this with a prayer. And I just really hope that this gives you something positive and hopeful to think about for your day if you're going through something that feels bad. Father God, thank you so much that you have worked things together for our good. Thank you that all that you have asked is that we love you and that we make you our Lord. And so I just pray for anyone who's watching this video, Lord, if they already have made you their Lord, then just work in their situations that you would work good out of things that appear to be bad. Lord, if there are people here that don't have you as their Lord, would you Tap them on the shoulder, whisper in their ear, tell them how much you love them. Help them just to see the vastness, the depth, the height, the width, the wonderful nature that you are, that you are love, and that there's nothing better than being in your presence, and there's nothing better than knowing that we are on your path. So thank you so much for saving us, for your grace, for your mercy, for your goodness, that you're faithful every single day. And so I pray a, a gigantic blessing on each and every one that's here today. And I just pray that you would continue to guide and lead in Jesus name. Amen. Okay, let's take a little walk in the woven shoes. And then until the next time, I hope that you are living your life on fire. As you can see, it is not the easiest to keep these shoes on. <laughs> that strap keeps falling off, but they are woven together so beautifully, don't you think? God is so good. I love how he gives us inspiration, wonderful things to consider, and that he can make all situations turn for good. So I hope that you have hope for today, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode of High Heel Hallelujah.